vector components, what they are and why we find them. Let's learn physics. Let's say you're pulling the kids on a sled with the rope at an angle of 45 degrees. The tension in that rope is 100 newtons. You're obviously pulling both forward and upward, but how much force is pulling forward and how much force is upward? The first and most common answer is just divide it in half. You have 50 newtons forward and 50 newtons upward. Let's take a look at that. This is one way to draw those two parts sketched to scale. It turns out that these two forces, the 50 and the 50, when added, follow right triangle rules and you can either use the Pythagorean theorem or sketch a scale triangle on graph paper to find the answer. If it's 50 newtons forward and 50 newtons upward, you end up with 71 newtons. Round it off to two digits. 50 newtons, 50 newtons, 5 centimeters each, and then just connect the two to find the sum for that right triangle. 7.1 centimeters or 71 newtons. Here's another way, Pythagorean theorem or the distance formula. So that 71 newtons is not the answer. We know that it's not 50 and 50. In fact, if it is 50 and 50 and they're both in the same direction, that would give us the original 100 newtons. But this is not what we're doing. And if the 50 newtons and the 50 newtons are opposite each other, the sum is zero. The force we have is 100 newtons. It's not 50 and 50 perpendicular. So let's use those same techniques, the Pythagorean theorem or these things to find the two legs of that triangle. This line is 10 centimeters long for 100 newtons and at 45 degrees. Finish up that right triangle and measure 7.1 centimeters each or 71 newtons. Or the trig method, 100 cosine 45, 100 sine 45, and posted on my wall are the common triangles. This is one, an isosceles right triangle, and there it is. Square root of 2 to 1 ratio. Hypotenuse divided by the square root of 2 gives you 71 newtons. There are other ways to draw these vector components. This is the parallelogram method. And as you can see, it will form two triangles. I'll be using the single triangle method. So once you solve this problem, you'll find that the two legs of this triangle are 71 newtons forward. It means you're pulling forward with 71 newtons and you're pulling upward with 71 newtons. Kind of weird, right? But it turns out that according to Galileo and science and Bacon and all these guys early, early, early in science, they were like, oh, yeah, mathematical equations and triangles and the world, they're all like the same thing. Math is a fun intellectual exercise, but without the science, it's kind of boring and dumb. Equations represent the world. Turns out that you pulling at 100 newtons, 45 degrees, will give you a 71 newton forward force and a 71 newton upward force. So you take those two, and if you add 71 newtons and 71 newtons, what do you get? That's right, add them up. 71 newtons and 71 newtons as shown, what's the sum? Natural answer, of course, if you're thinking about is uh, 71 plus 71 gives me 142. And if you're okay with math, then you can do that, but it's not the answer. 71 plus 71, both of those in the same direction, that would be 142 as we saw before. If they're in the same direction, you get 142, but the question is, what happens if they're perpendicular? What's the sum? 71 newtons horizontal and perpendicular to that, another 71 newtons, gives you the sum of 100 newtons. Here's that sum shown in a different way. Turns out that Vector addition is completely different. This force addition, completely different from regular numerical addition. So that plus that gives you that. Oh, well, it makes sense, right? Because you get 100 newtons in this direction. When you split it, you get 71 newtons forward and 71 newtons up. So if you put it back together, you get the original. So if you put it back together, you get the original. So if you put it back together, you get the original. Split it into its components. This is where we get this. The 71 newtons and the 71 newtons are the two components of that original vector. Components of a vector. They're two perpendicular vectors that add to give the original vector. So those two can replace. They can replace it. So you can take this, cover that, cut, that just ignore that for now. You get 71 newtons forward and 71 newtons up vector replacement. And we find those vector components so that we can replace the original. Replace the original. When you add them, you get back the original vector. So these vector components are vector replacements. Let's try another one.
Let's say the car is traveling at 50 miles an hour, 30 degrees north of east. Finish up the triangle as we did before, and then using the special triangles on my wall, you can calculate those two components, 43 miles per hour east and 25 miles an hour north, using half of the hypotenuse for the short leg and the short leg multiplied by the square root of three for the long leg. It's going both 43 miles an hour east and 25 miles an hour north. Trigonometry method, 50 cosine 30, 50 sine 30, same values. You can also draw this thing to scale using your tools. Same values, 43 miles an hour east, 25 miles an hour north. And a corollary, we ask what is the sum of 43 miles an hour east and 25 miles an hour north? Of course it is 50 miles an hour and 30 degrees north of east. If you put it back together, you get the original. This vector component idea where you take a vector and you split it into its two perpendicular parts that add up to give you the original, super useful for velocity and acceleration. If you are turning a corner and speeding up at the same time, there are two components perpendicular to each other. One is the turning a corner acceleration, one is the speeding up acceleration. Forces, obviously useful. Momentum, also a vector. Work. The force and displacement have to be parallel to each other. Torque, the lever arm and the force have to be perpendicular to each other. So you got to find components there. Satellites and projectiles. They actually are satellites and projectiles because of these two forces that are acting parallel to the motion and perpendicular to the motion. And you have to do components to really understand them. So super useful components of vectors. Vector components are vector replacements, and we do this to make the math easier and the concepts easier. But remember, two perpendicular vectors that add to give the original vector are the vector components. Vector components, pretty significantly important in physics. Thanks for watching Learn Physics, and thanks for that thumbs up too. Really helps a lot. New videos most academic weeks. Subscribe for more. I've even got education ideas, Freaky Physics Friday, and Tech Tip Tuesday. And for bicycles, motorcycles, and family adventures, it's my other channel, Bike Physics. You just learned physics.